my name's Kim Mori, so I'm an Eastern Aranda Amajara person. I've grown up here in Adelaide, but my family connections are to Central Australia. I'm the manager of Knowledge Translation and Exchange in the Wadley Pringa team. The diabetes study ultimately is aiming to try and understand why Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people get type 2 diabetes at much younger ages, but more importantly, why our people experience the associated complications of diabetes at also at much younger ages. So, you know, cardiac events, renal disease, blindness and circuitry problems are all associated complications of type 2 diabetes and unfortunately in our community it affects our people much younger and has devastating impacts on people's quality of life. So the diabetes study is really trying to understand are there any clues or markers in our blood or urine that can um, tell the scientists or identify for the scientists um, and ultimately for the doctor when you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes that there's a clue there that um, the doctor will know that without a particular type of care, the person will end up with end-stage renal disease or will end up having a cardiac event or potentially blindness or, you know, end up having an amputation as a result of their type 2 diabetes without this particular care. And currently, when people are diagnosed, so if I was diagnosed today, the doctor couldn't say to me, Kim, unless you do all of these things, you're likely to end up with renal disease. And so really the study is trying to understand, are there clues that can tell us into the future so that we can prevent our people from experiencing these complications at much younger ages. With the Aboriginal Diabetes Study, we went to and spoke to all of our key stakeholders to start with. So obviously our peak body, the Aboriginal Health Council. We then wrote to all of the Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Services and we visited nearly all Aboriginal communities. There's, a couple, there's one community we haven't been to yet and that's been through uh, not appropriate timing for the community. But really what we did was we got a sense from community whether they thought that this project was going to be important and relevant to them before we applied for funding and before we applied for ethical approval, which really is flipping the process um, on its head really. And that is in response to what the community told us. Um, so really getting a sense of, you know, did people think this was important and would they support the study were really important steps in the process for us in our planning before we actually, you know, applied for the funding and, you know, eventually was successful. There's lots of things that are exciting about the Aboriginal Diabetes Study because I think that if the you know, from a scientific perspective, if we can identify what those markers or clues are um, in, in um, our blood and urine, that, you know, one, we can potentially hopefully prevent type 2 diabetes in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I mean, that's a huge, huge ask. Um, but we don't know from a scientific perspective if we can answer those questions, but also importantly, the, the complications. If we can reduce the burden of complications on people that are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and improve people's quality of life, you know, that will have a major impact on, on that individual, on their family and ultimately on our communities. And that's what I think is really exciting about the Aboriginal Diabetes Study and the fact that we're doing things the right way and ensuring that Aboriginal people have control over the process and are decision makers in that process. Mm -hmm.